My name is Andy Bardil, I'm Director of Red Loop, which is the Design and Innovation Centre at Middlesex University. Innovation is a really fascinating area to work in because new opportunities come along every day, technologies change, people's wants, needs, desires change. It's a great time to be running the Innovation Centre at Middlesex University because the network is growing, the network is building and we're becoming involved in some really fascinating projects. The collaboration with the RF Museum came about because we are partner institutions and they had a great opportunity on the horizon because they planned to raise the last remaining Dornia 17 from the bottom of the English Channel but until it's rebuilt the public can't, can't see it. So with everybody carrying smartphones it brings about new opportunities. People are expecting new ways of interacting with museums so we worked uh, within Red Loop to produce a set of proposals about how we could exhibit and interpret this object to engage new audiences whilst it was in conservation. The artefact we pulled from bottom of the sea is going to take two or three years to conserve, it's not in one piece. So Red Loop came back with some initial ideas for the exhibition um, based here at London and up at Cosford where we've got the conservation facility where the Dornier is. So what we've done is to recreate the aircraft itself so that people can engage with it, see it, look at it and find new stories from it. We've done that by building full-size replicas, uh, technical illustrations of the aircraft itself in situ where it's being conserved. We've also developed augmented reality apps so that you can hold your phone into, into the air and, and actually see a full-size 3D model of the door and you walk around it, get up close to it. Using augmented reality, we can bring back to life the Dornier as it was the day it was shot down, so the public can see real life, full size, flying Dornier 17 in locations at Cosford, London, and all around the world. The response to the has been very good so far. Anybody who sees it is pretty wowed by it. So, the main thing we've taken away from the collaboration is that by working in partnership, you bring new ideas to how you can exhibit your artifacts, engage the public, and use technology to create really exciting displays. And as that moves on into wearable tech, like Google Glass for example, we can start to envisage um, completely new user experiences in museums and in, in general life. But of course that needs to be humanised to make it a useful innovation. Without considering people and designing things from the perspective of people, we'll end up with useless tech and no innovation. So humanising the technology is really core to the process.